G'day, my name is Alan and I've started this page called Big Al Story where I can share some of my stories and I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to share with you what my story is and why I love story. So I'm a 39 year old man and I think I definitely fall into the category of uh, many men, many young men, I think I'm young-ish, many men, doesn't really matter your age, anything above 20. Um, where you don't have a purpose. So I don't really believe I've found my purpose. I'm in the process of finding it, but it's a pretty daunting thing to, you know, to say, yes, I have found my purpose and I'm living my purpose. Seems to be a bit of a buzzword, bit of a buzz phrase, but that's definitely uh, something that I'm going through. So I haven't found my purpose, but I've definitely been looking for it for a long, long time. So my and I definitely fall into that category of person that wants to find one that one thing that they do, that they're known for, that they've mastered, um, that they have complete control of. And it's like, kablam, you, you know that person, you think of that person and you go, yes, Olympic swimmer. Or, yep, that person, they do this. Bang, done. You don't have to explain it. You rock up to a party. So what do you do? Fly planes. What do you do? I'm a goalie for Australia. And what? You don't have to explain anymore. They'll probably ask questions because it's so interesting. It's so singular, but you just pick a bland. People generally, not just males, but often just want to have that purpose, bang, fire it back at the person when it's, when it's asked. Even if they don't ask it, you just tell them. Anyway, there's a whole big, there's a whole lot of backstory to the word purpose. Now, I definitely fall into the category of someone that wants that, but I don't think I've found it. My my little list here, I've written of all my little purposes that I've gone through in the years. I probably won't go through them all with you, but I'll go through some of them. The first thing that I really wanted to do was BMX. Now, I think on reflect, like when I did it, I was like, I could just ride bikes for the rest of my life. My parents were like, you can't just ride bikes for the rest of your life. And people these days, even in my day back then, rode bikes for a living. But anyway, that didn't happen. But I just did it with such passion and such singularity that anyone that I sort of did for that period of my life, people thought of Alan, bikes, bikes, Alan. So that was like my identity for that, um, those earlier years of my life. And on reflection, I can think, I think I know why I liked it is because nobody told me that I had to ride bikes. So it was like under my own control, like I'll choose to ride bikes. And bikes are a very freeing thing. You can sort of sort of go within limits. You can sort of go wherever you want. It's up to you. And so you can't be like, it's a very freeing thing. I think that's why that was like my little singular purpose thing when I was a younger person. Anyway, I moved on from that. Um, recently, I've done a like a, a revisit of that because I've been to videography. And that became my thing where I'm like, oh, maybe this can be my thing, videography. And then I paired that with my BMX stuff and I have a, a friction of a, I have a, what do you call it? A pseudo character. I always think pseudonym. But yeah, I have a pseudo character, I guess. Oh, what are they called? I don't know. Pseudo character, we'll call it that. Uh, called Friction and he goes around doing skids. So it sort of matches my, my older passion for bike riding with videography and like creation of characters and stuff like that. Um. I don't know if it's a failure or not, but it, it hasn't become my singular purpose successful thing, but I gave it a go. And um, that character's always there, ready for me to pick up and do some more skids on my bike. Anyway, I don't do that. I've definitely got it after that. Art, art became a bit of a thing for me. I became an art teacher for about a decade. That's no mean, no mean feat, I guess. But yeah, art is a similar thing. Like it. Art is a, in the Western world anyway, it's sort of like all opportunities are there. Like you get a blank canvas and that's very appealing to me. Have a blank canvas. Like my, when I did artworks, I used to do everything on an A4 piece of paper. And I think I was just addicted to having a, the potential there of a blank piece of paper. I was like, blam, this could be anything. And I would attack it like that. And I had like a thick book of A4 pieces of paper actually got me into uni but anyway it's sort of my passion for art sort of died when I went to uni <laughs> my passion for art when I wasn't in control of it and other people started telling me what to do I was like well sorry it's not going to happen um 
I'm going to, like subconsciously, I'm going to go find something else that I can control and you can't tell me what's in it. So when I went to art university, I pretty much immediately picked up an interest in music. And music is, for me, the same sort of thing. Like the way I began music, which was a lot more daunting than most musicians, is like I have like a, I don't know, it's a, a slightly different introduction to music than most Western musicians. It's For me, it's like the potential of sounds that are out there are endless. Give me a go at them all and I'll make something interesting, which is not how, <laughs> it's not what music teachers tell people. Um, so I, I came at it from a soundscape thing and I would like trial and error to find chords. Just to me, there was this big corcophony, carcophony, corcophony of um, sounds and chords. And I just trialed and errored for ages to get to these things. And I have wasted, I don't know if waste is the word, but I've used lots of time in my life. And you'll ask my parents, like that, ding, dum, 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 ding, dum, dum, ding, ding, dum, dum, dum. Oh yeah, but I just made that sound like it took 15 seconds. Ask my parents to let you know that I would trial and error things on the piano lots and lots of time. Anyway, that wasn't, although I still play music now, it's still definitely part of my identity, but it's, I don't, again, maybe I need to get off this singular identity thing, but I would just say it's just part of my story, part of my identity. I'm just looking at my guitar on the wall. Um, yeah, but it has, definitely hasn't become my singular successful thing. You rock up to a party, what do you do? Musician, blam. I don't say that to people. Even though if I, I definitely at the moment have enough skills to become a paid musician and go do that because I ended up learning some chords. When the internet came along, I was like, fuck, let's just play the chords. You have to fucking trial and error. Anyway, so yeah, music, guitar, um, piano. I got into a lot of Fruity Loops. Um, electronic music and that's where my family's disgust for my trial and error really became apparent because you can, you can trial something with a loop just put it on loop let it play and just constantly like roll through your own little experiment on it but the machine just keeps running so you can walk off for like 30 seconds come back and it'll still be living and people are like that's not music Alan that is that's noise that's very frustrating People at the teacher flats that I was teaching at, they discovered that as well. Anyway, I'm not an electronic musician, but I learnt shit tons about a whole heap of stuff with that. Um, did teaching? I definitely think that there's a in my story. I, there's like I'm a teacher. Like, but when people ask me, like many years ago, when I first got into teaching, it'd just be interesting for me because people would say, "What do you What do you do at a party or whatever when you're out?" I say. I'm a teacher and I used to, it felt good as like a singular word, kablam. And I liked it because it never looked or sounded like a teacher. And I probably still don't. And I, but I was like, I felt somewhat comfortable with that. And I was like, teacher. But that as the years went on, I taught for 15 years all up. As the years went on, I sort of, I don't know, that style of, I don't know, the context or something, something doesn't fit with me. I learned as much as I could out of it. But it's sort of just, I don't fit with Western t teaching. Not that I'm heaps better than Western uh, institution of education, but something about it doesn't mesh with me. For me, teaching is a blank canvas. And to have a teacher come into the classroom like, right, we've got a blank canvas, metaphorically, anything can happen. That takes a lot of energy for the teacher to say that and to approach things like that. And I think that's why I don't fit with Western education. Anyway, that's part of my story. So I did that for 15 years, gave me a mental breakdown. <laughs> that's definitely part of my story. So now I go to, to parties and people say, what um, what do you do? And I'm like, bipolar. Oh, that's not even singular, it's like two parts to that. But anyway, it has a ring to it. I don't do that at parties, but I just had mental health or something. Anyway, still on the journey. Um, Yes, yeah, so I taught for 15 years. Last seven years of it was in um, special education. Uh, I had a little break, break in there in between where I had my mental breakdown. 
Um, yeah, and more recently, I've done a thing called Learn a Dad that I started up because I had two kids. Um, that's pretty strong ideas about parenting before I had my kids, but it's been really great. It's been great to have kids. It's been really great to prove and disprove some of my concepts through, you know, reality. And sometimes you think something is really clear and the reality of doing it and having a, another person in the, in the mix, it's not, a, it's not an inanimate blank canvas. It's a person It's like, okay, that trial and error didn't work on that one. Okay. Anyway, it's been a great journey of um, teaching and learning. And um, again, I was, I was craving that, this thing that I could learn a dad. Um, I still do it. I still got um, videos and stuff that I make. I've got a heap on my phone that I need to upload. I still do it, but I, again, I'm looking for that singular thing. Okay, that's what I do. I help people with parenting. Um, but it still just doesn't fit, fit right for me and my story. But it definitely turns me on. <laughs> definitely is part of my story. And I still always find myself uh, writing dialogue in my head of how I could explain things I've experienced and that to me seemed really clear and really detailed but and I want to express it to other people so that's definitely something I'm going to do more of and I love it and uh, possibly story which is what I'm coming to story can help with that sometimes um, story is a very powerful thing anyway uh, learn a dad teaching videography videography is one that I've done, didn't realise it, but from my start of my art degree all the way through, I didn't sort of realise, like, oh, man, I'm so good at all these different things. Jeez, I'm cool. Music, art, all this calligraphy, all this stuff. And then I didn't realise that a common thread through it all was videography. So I was doing videos with VHS when I was at art university. And, um, yeah, it's, life is, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of you like that sometimes. It's sort of like, you've been working with film for several years now, you haven't noticed it, and you've mastered some things out of it. There you go. So then, me being me, I was like, cool, bang, videography is what it is. Love it, let's do it. And then so I started up a thing called Kite Video, and I did a few jobs and things with that. Um, made some money out of it, not a, not a great deal, because I... I have this thing with when it comes to purpose. Whenever you, tr whenever I try to get it into a singular one thing, put all my effort into it, and I think I'm not the only one that experiences this. It's like kablam, cool. This is what it's gonna be, all in here. And then, uh, like I look over and I'm like, oh yeah, but I also want to do that. Also, like, I know I'm not a surfer, but it'd be cool to give it a go. And or, or um, I still want to do music. How can I do videography? Oh, okay, I'll make them together. And then you like convoluted sort of things. But anyway, videography, again, it's not the singular thing, but it's definitely part of my story. And it's definitely something I'm not going to just let go of. It'll come in and out to me when I need it. But anyway, videography, I really do have a passion for videography. And I keep saying this word story. Videography gives me this ability to I have a observation my uh, my observation skills I would say are, are above above average my mum told me <laughs> when I was very young before I could understand her she said you're very observant and I was like what's observant and she said you're very perceptive and she described what it was very well but um, she told me that at a very young age and before she told me that I knew that I was observant <laughs> So, the reason I'm saying that is because to be a good storyteller, I think you need to be, you need to see real stories in front of you. Okay, well, that thing just happened. That actually is a story. Um, to p perceive it and pick it up is, is quite a skill. With videography, you, you know, the whole observer effect, you get to be behind the camera and you, and you, you can fool yourself and you go, like, oh, I'm not a story. I'm... I'm an observer of stories and because I'm an observant person, observant person, that's going to work because I can be quiet and I can observe. That's the story. That's the part of the story I need. You go get it. A bit like a journalist, I guess. You go grab it 
important and go, cool. And I also have a story in my head, so I'm going to edit in the way that I perceive the story and the way I want it to be. So, yeah, it's like I really do have a passion for videography and putting like Tarantino said this thing about music and images put together. There's like this scientific thing that happens in your head and you know, it synergizes and you, either one by themselves doesn't create that little energy. And I think a lot of people that edit film know what I'm talking about. They're like, you can just have like normal film, normal everyday story happening, film it 30 seconds. And then you're like, cool, people maybe watch that, nice narrative. You chuck some music in there and all of a sudden it, the whole story changes and it's like, what? And it's not as simple as music image, although it is, but like you put a different song in there and the whole dynamics change. Anyway, I definitely have a passion for videography and I feel it's going to serve me moving into the future. Uh, I did something called the, the Greater Review, which is a, uh, a thing in Ipswich where I helped a friend um, it already existed, so what, what would you call the greater review? It was a, and still is a, not sure, but yet, um, basically what Kezia and myself did would go around, we'd ask 10 questions of local people doing local things, getting to know people, getting to know businesses, sharing their story, I guess, and doing that. And I wanted to just be, as I said, the observer behind the camera and Kezia in her wisdom a very smart woman said no you can't do that you've got to be on this side of the camera getting filmed and I was like oh so I hadn't done any live videos and then hadn't done any live videos but then sort of jumped in the deep end with that for many people it wouldn't sound like a deep end and press live cool but for me it was a quite a big um hurdle to get over so I did some live videos and it was Quite an empowering, empowering thing. Glad that I did that. Um, we did some edited videos with that as well. But anyway, that is uh, what I did there. Another thing that's been going since I was about 16 is car racing. And I, I've said this to many people, out of all these random skills I have, I would say car racing is the thing I'm the, the most singularly, singularly, singularly good at. Out of all those things, I'm the best at racing. And I think it's, I don't know why that is. I don't know, but if you put me in a race car, I'll make it work. I don't know why. Um, I've got some ideas about it. I think because the, probably because I'm a, <laughs> a little bit crazy and I sort of don't always see life and death the same way other people do. And I'm just like, well, I've got tasks to do. Life and death, secondary task, do it. Um, and there's the whole, like, it's a very artist sort of thing. There's like lines in it and there's, it's a very detailed dynamic thing that seems very simple. I don't know why, but it, I don't, I wouldn't even say I love it, but I would say that I'm very good at car racing. Make of that what you will. Uh, I still do it. There's been doing it a lot less lately because of, um, COVID and all that, but I, I just, it's definitely... I've felt this urge to go film a lot of race cars lately, film my own car. I want to film my day car and its story and put it on the racetrack. Every time I get in my car, that's what I think I want to do. <laughs> so stay tuned for that one. But yeah, race cars, I would say I do love it. You know, I just, you can. what's happening now is I'm trying to talk and all I'm thinking in my mind is just a racetrack. And it takes all my words away because I'm just like, takes your words away because you've got to concentrate you can't be you can't have dial in a dialogue when you are racing so it's, pro it's many people have told me it's probably my meditation i do talk to myself when i'm racing but there's definitely parts of the track where you do not talk to yourself you're like this needs to be done anyway racing it's good good stuff um calligraphy is another one i guess you relate that to racing because like the lines of calligraphy definitely are related to the lines of race races racing cars um i can make that link sounds a bit wanky but anyway i love calligraphy it's awesome um i've got heaps of different styles of calligraphy 
and like graffiti styles and things. Anyway, just part of my story. And again, I went through the process of, of thinking maybe this is going to be my singular purpose thing. And it's not. It's just something I can do. Um, and I'll probably keep doing it. I don't do it. It's a bit sporadic when I do it lately, but I've got an idea for doing one. I was going to do it tonight, but I filmed this instead. I thought it was more important. Now, the mo most recent thing I would say I'm into, it's probably not even that recent, but I've been doing it for a while, which is story. And I think I am seeing where this may fit. It's not, doesn't, I don't have to go through that process, although I have, of thinking, okay, that this is going to be my singular thing. I'm going to be a published author. Kablam, that's my thing. So when I go to a party and people say, what do you do? Author, cool. What have you got published? I haven't. <laughs> um, I do want to publish something got a story uh, but yeah it's I love story because it takes me back to being an artist and remember when I said with a4 piece of paper anything could come out of that a4 piece of paper so the words I wrote down before we started uh, story I'll even show you story so it's like exploding and the words I've got there are explosion no limits unlimited potential and that's what i love about story so although like a storyteller will observe real stories and observe real people and be cool and then put it in your own little mind and edit it and you go okay this is going to be a story anything can happen and to me that is extremely attractive um but i think as a essence i probably am a storyteller It's probably why I find it difficult to like get a singular thing because as soon as I'm like, okay, this is my thing, my storyteller mind goes, but what about the unlimited potential, Alan? And I'm like, yeah, but let's just forget the unlimited potential. Let's just do this thing so I can say I'm a writer. I go, I know, but anything could happen, Alan. And you're like, fuck it, all right, let's go do calligraphy. But anyway, so I love story for that reason. And it's been annoying me lately, but I start, as you can tell, I'm sort of coming to terms with it um i've been like really getting into like mental mental health men's health for myself but also like holding space for other people and spiritual spirituality and that area i'm not sure what you would call all that area it is what it is but I, i've been getting interested in that for myself and for other people um, and just as all this story stuff has been coming up, I've been making proper, you know, feel good development with it, solid developments, making complete stories, recording them and stuff. And I'm like, God, it's happening again. It's like, I've got this like story thing, but I want to do all this men's health stuff. So like, I'm just useless. I just, this purpose thing is just starting to annoy me. And I'm like, Alan, just calm down. The story can serve what you're doing and vice versa just calm it down and um move forward <laughs> um and i think one way i might be able to look at this is that i just do these two things story always for me will be an explosion unlimited potential so i, I refuse and story refuses for me to say okay that's going to serve my my fashion of the month now you know flavor of the month of men's health everything all your stories need to be directed and serve that and i refuse and story refuses to let that happen so like some of my stories can are already and can and will serve men's health spirituality that space some of them will be about purpose but i'm not going to say to story you need to serve everything in this direction it's it's its own entity and some of the stories like i, sh I can't think of it off the top of my head but um let's just think what's the what's the last one i recorded or am in the process of recording is yeah, about a dystopian future and about gayness in gayness in the dystopian future and the metaverse it's all right just anyway 
Not about men's health, really. But some of the stuff is, some of it's about parenting. And what I'm trying to say is that I'm happy that these two things can be in my life. They don't have to clash. Story is going to serve and vice versa to serve men's health and mental health. Um, but they don't have to be exclusive. So the space I'm creating for my storytelling is to be a blank A4 piece of paper that anything can happen, I ref as I've said a few times. I refuse, and if I tried, it wouldn't work anyway. So I'll say, all your stories need to serve this, not gonna happen. Some of it will serve, some of it won't. It's just something you know, I do. So maybe that stuff will get published. I'm, I'm doing a lot of audible recordings and using some videography skills to chuck in there. The men's health stuff that I'm doing, uh, the words that I wrote down with my sister, Diane, the other day were, um, she did like a big whiteboard, and entertain, educate, and evolve. So those are this, I don't know, this massive, beautiful, detailed process we went through. I don't know how, but we came up with those words. And they feel good for me. So when I'm doing my men's, and you can see how those words would um, relate to storytelling, entertain. Um, you might call that alignment, I guess. Uh, entertain. I just like entertain. Like within all that, I have discovered that I like to entertain. <laughs> and that my whole teaching career, I've been an entertainer, a burnt out entertainer. Um, like a comedian that's like, instead of doing five minute sets, I've been doing like one year sets and getting burnt out. Uh, so yeah, entertain is part of what I do. On top of all that other crap I just said, I'm an entertainer. Um, which to me fits in with storytelling. Educate fits in with storytelling. So I'm not jamming these in, but I'm just saying that there seems to be an alignment there. Um, so I want to educate people and like with the learner dad stuff, I still feel there's space for that there for me to educate about kids and how they can relate to adults and a whole range of things and evolution. So that in my story of my life, I think you can see how I've evolved from riding BMX bikes 